appreciate y'all for tuning in, man. I'm your host, Gabos. Yo, we got another one. Yo, a lot of y'all probably don't know this about me, but I'm like like one of the biggest MMA fans on the planet. I started watching it back in 2020, and that sport just kind of grew on me, bro. I don't know, man. I feel like people that don't understand the sport just think it's a bunch of barbaric men killing each other in the octagon. But actually, bro, these fighters be having stories. A lot of these guys come from nothing, from third world countries, having to support their family while getting paid in peanuts and pennies. Uh, a lot of these guys, if you like spent time to really just get into the sport and get into like their whole narrative, uh, these guys are like heroes in a, in a weird sense right not just killers and and animals that just fight for money but like these guys are like heroes in their country when they achieve the title it's something crazy bro but we got Ilya Taporia is relentless Ilya Taporia is the next man up to challenge Volk for the featherweight champion of the world Volk just doesn't lose to anybody bro he's he's only actually lost when he's moved up outside of his division but in terms of the featherweight division for you casuals this dude is kind of like the GOAT <laughs> Alex just doesn't lose Aussie 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 um, but Ilya Taporia, bro, he's coming up. I think he's the fourth rank currently right now. And they have like a big event coming in like three weeks. So we're going to get into Ilya Taporia and how relentless he is. This dude is the truth. I really don't believe too many fighters could beat Alex at this form. And he's in his prime. But Ilya Taporia is just making a mess of everybody, son. I'm not even going to hold you, bro. His featherweight division has grown tired and slow moving. Unquestionable dominance from the champion has been the status quo for some time. But with a battle-worn king with eyes on another throne, it seems fate has stretched out its hand to the division's most dangerous contender. Today, we'll be taking a look Sheesh. at the rise and dominance of Ilya Taporia and why he might be the man to usurp Alexander Volkanovsky as UFC featherweight champion can't wait man hold on shout out to born in germany shout out to marshall liam i mean to georgian parents Ilya taporia would begin training at just seven years old at age 15 the family moved to spain where he quickly dropped out of school and began feverishly training every aspect of mixed martial arts and it quickly paid off making his professional debut at just 18 years old El Matador would immediately display the poise and focus of a man 10 years his senior, picking up seven submissions in a row. He left him limb. In the first round, Taporia cemented himself as a nasty up-and-coming grappler and earned a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt in the process. It wouldn't be until his eighth bout against that. South African fighter, Steven Goncalves, that we get to see arguably the most dangerous aspect of Taporia's game. Ooh, good his block. Hands. Oh, he still caught the ricochet. He oh! Folded him! Such a thunderous knockout rarely goes unnoticed in the world of MMA. And Taporia would make Whoa. his UFC debut 11 months later. Stepping in on short This had to be around 2020. Salal, at just 23 years old. Is that short notice? Demonstrate his bold mix of confidence and craftiness. Use That's a takedown. Cerebral cage generalship and dynamic grappling to wear his opponent out, winning the bout by unanimous decision. Beat Zalal backed up against the fence. Oh, oh rock them. There's the knee. Oh, four in the corner. There's the knee. But it offered a level change. Won it, but once he didn't have it. Oh, oh my gosh. Not the triangle. Kick off and it went disengaged, but. Another yes. takedown. That was being like Tesla. Oh, oh, there's that flying switch knee, but it was caught by. And there it is. And while there would be more impressive displays to come, Taporia proved that he wouldn't fold or bend under the bright lights okay. of the UFC. Oh, that's nasty. Ten days notice. After picking up the win in his UFC debut, it was time for the world to see what the Georgian could do with a full camp. So two months later. Taporia would fight Damon Jackson, and he didn't disappoint. From the sound of the opening bell, you can see how he got the nickname El Matador. After continually ripping to the body, body shots Taporia is nasty. Hit a home run, cracking Jackson with a textbook right hook and send him crashing to the mat. Ooh. He's on his own. See, he knows he wants to be able to come over He's here. just unloading on Damon oh Jackson. Oh my gosh. 
Oh my god. That body shot was nasty. Oh, he slept them. First round. Your body work is something that we don't really see in MMA a lot, you know, just ripping punch to the body. Is, is that something you feel is missing in this sport? Like I said before, I, I, I like the Canelo style, the body shots. I was watching him since I was a kid, you know, and I tried to, to, to copy him. You feel and that's the thing, like, if you're not really into with MMA, there are like three different styles. You have your strikers, you have your grapplers, and I mean, grapplers and wrestlers are kind of like the same thing. And you got your submission artists, right? Uh, the thing with Volk, Volk is solid all around. Volk is like indestructible, bro. You, you're not gonna get Volk to tap. I'm telling you, this dude has been in some of the nastiest submissions I've ever seen in my life, and he just doesn't tap, and he wills himself to a victory. Toporia is a little bit of everything. He got the sub. He could grapple you and wrestle you to the ground, and his striking, I mean, man says he looked up to Canelo. <laughs> that that lets you know what this dude is capable of not to mention he, he got a black belt bro i've never been afraid for volk in any matchup i'm afraid of this one i'm afraid of this one so you're one of the strongest most powerful punchers in that division yeah of course i'm and you know i'm, I'm young i have a uh a lot of things to, for improve and i'm the next champion you know what are some of the names that are on your radar that you would like to challenge yourself with in the, Come in on the now. cage? The only man who means something for me, it's the man who, ha who has the belt, you know? I don't care about anyone. Say his name. You know, I, I just want a man who has the belt and anyone, I don't care. I, I, I want to fight with anyone. I, I was waiting for the Bono in my first fight. He doesn't say his but name. This time I, I want my Bono, you know? My fight bonus. I want for. I want my fight bonus. Hey, translated. How? Uh, yeah. Translated. My <laughs> bonus. Pay me money. money. <laughs> yeah. I want my fifty. You deserve it. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much, my man. Seven months later. The I'm telling you, these athletes don't even get paid like that. And you would think these guys are main eventing fights on ESPN, uh, fighting in front of thousands, maybe even millions, actually. Excuse me, it's ESPN. Uh, and you would think that these guys are well taken care of, bro. You got, like, these fighters aren't really eaten until, number one, they break ranking, which is top 15. And you can only imagine in UFC versus all these kind of fighters to be top 15 is an accomplishment by itself. But you're not really eating until you're the champ or the number one underneath the champ. Or unless you have like a superstar hype behind your name, we've seen you, the UFC take care of those guys too. So in, in some rare instances, you don't have to be a champion to really get paid. But some of these other guys, bro, if you're not top 15, you get paid like, like 15 Gs, 20 Gs after a fight. And half of that got to go to your management team, bro. But offer to pour you another Real. gift. The opportunity to fight on a Conor McGregor card and receive all the attention that comes Sheesh. with it. His opponent, Ryan Hall, would be a huge step up for Taporia. I saw this card. Years his senior, Hall is a dangerous submission artist with a truly unique style and had an eight-fight win streak to boot. It seems someone forgot to mention any of that to Taporia. Unlike Hall's previous opponents, the Georgian had little respect for anything Hall Stop had it. to offer. Taporia walked through spinning wheel attempts and largely refused to bite on any of Hall's random rolls or heel hook attempts. With 15 seconds left in the round, Taporia's patience wore thin. Mm -hmm. and he decided mm -hmm. to smash Hall. Slept him. Brutal ground and pound until the referee stopped the fight. 100%. The way he's diving, Imanari roll type situation. Wild way to approach the legs. I remember this fight. It's a weird style. This is actually a style in MMA. He slept him. He's done. The ease in which Taporia got the finish garnered a lot of attention. And introduced mm -hmm. the wider fan base to the no nonsense brutality of Ilya Taporia. With the rest of the sport put firmly on notice, Taporia would enter 2022 with a nice amount of buzz around his name. Unfortunately for Ilya, a dangerous weight cut would lead to the cancellation of his bout against Mosvarev Loyev at UFC 270. 
and Teporia wouldn't compete until March, this time at 155 pounds. His opponent, six foot one British fighter Jai Herbert. Would the size of Herbert be too much for the five foot seven Teporia? The first minute certainly made it seem that way. With Herbert dropping to Poria. Five seven, man. Leg head kick. And to be as dangerous as he is. Oh, Woo! That was a nasty. That joint really hit him. Oh my god. And he ate that. By some miracle, Teporia weathered the storm and put his grappling skills to good use. Wow. Stalling any more punishment and giving himself time to recover. And that's what you want to see from a top Yet competitor, bro. Resilience. Round. The two men were exchanging blows once more. Everybody tough till they get hit, right? Stunning knee that sent Ilya's Everybody tough till they get hit. Lying. How do you respond? Oh my gosh. Need the mouthpiece out of him. Oh. Barely surviving the round. Teporia would attempt to regain his composure in the second. Reach on him. Can't get a hold of the legs. Oh! oh. oh. Teporia threw a hard left hook to the liver and immediately followed it up with his trademark oh my right God. hook. Congratulations when the hook gives, the, gives the whiplash, that is hook. as flush as you ever want to connect on anybody's jaw, ladies and gentlemen. That is clean. I'm like, he said himself, the liver shot to the jaw. Before you can even say, ow, you counting sheep, bro. Teporia would attempt to regain his composure in the second. Reach on him. Can't get a hold of the legs. Oh, 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 oh. Teporia threw a hard left hook to the liver and immediately followed it up oh. with his trademark right hook. Congratulations on that incredible round two knockout. Talk us through the finish because a rough first round and then you came and he back got the look. incredible finish in the second. The dude has like this dark vampires kind of superstar look like, like he looked like he... He could be a champion, you know what I'm saying? In terms of like the complete package and wanting to feel like, yo, you got you guys got yourself like a superstar. He looks like he could sell fights, bro. I had a tough first round. I was surprised because he was really fast. But in the second round, I take his head off. That's all I remember. So I want to stay uh, active this year. I want to make three, four fights. So maybe in June, July, I will be ready. With his hype train chugging along nicely, it was time for Ilya to cap off a great year with his first real name, the Southern Assassin, Bryce Mitchell. Just the smirking two men at him. shared many similarities. Just a few years between them in age, both hungry for success in the featherweight division, and both entering the bout with undefeated professional records. From the sounds of the first horn, Teporia's level of focus was apparent, using dynamic head movement, tactical pressure and explosive combinations to tire mm. Mitchell out. Though Mitchell is no pushover and didn't seem overly bothered by the relentless focus of the Georgian. Oh my goodness. In round one. By the second round, this proved to be a mistake. Teporia was consistently landing beautiful combinations and dropped Mitchell with an uppercut followed by a hook. I think he got stung. Oh, big uppercut. Mm. Oh, he got hit. knocks Mitchell down. I think this is a mistake. Going to the ground with Bryce Mitchell when you heard him standing up. Crafty grappling. And oh, it's over. Slam. Ultimately set up the ending of the fight with Teporia sinking in an arm triangle to hand Bryce Mitchell his first professional loss. Still to go round two. He on the belly. Teporia is in excellent shape. It's really. Oh, like an oh, arm my triangle. goodness. Look yeah. at this. Oh, oh he's still undefeated. Wow. Elliot Teporia. Filthy work. Oh, my goodness. Mitchell. Wow. When you submit a submission artist, his second performance that's cold. Night, bonus in a row. Five and O oh now. How good does that feel? So I feel I'm amazing. You know, I feel blessed. I put so much in this training camp and the hard work. At the end of the day is pay off. You know. Bryce is, I think, the only guy that's been able to get you to the ground. Were you Were you concerned at all that he was able to do that, um, or or not at all? No, not at all. I I I, I was not thinking that. He will be able to take me down, but and at the end of the day, it's a fight, you know. Yeah. Things like this happen, but the most important is that I get that W. So, who cares? But could he continue <laughs> the streak? Who cares? At Thirteen and zero, and nearly the top of the division. Teporia would have to face one more opponent before his shot at UFC gold. 
arguably the most dangerous and underrated. This dude, I've never been hit as hard as they describe this man, um, Josh Emmett, bro. He is like Tyson. You know what I'm saying? And I, it's not, I, I think it's his left. It's not really his right, but whoever you you can think of when you think of one of the hardest hitting fighters you've ever seen maybe joe frazier this dude hits like a tank bro josh emmett he's not even well known or superstar i've watched a couple of this dude's fights this dude when he lands you could see the fighter's soul halfway leave their body but just but barely keep intact like this dude is nasty bro Rated gatekeeper in the division and number five in the rankings josh emmett a man who needs no introduction to the oh. hardcore fans of the sport and oh. power defies all logic and reason <laughs> and his highlight reel proves he can knock out any fighter sleeps you any bro moment. sleeps he finally faced off in the octagon deporia are you stupid i would never and landing clean combinations but deporia stood in the box with him deporia intended to spend much of the first round chopping away at the lead leg of emmett likely hoping to take some of the pop out of his punches it was a wise move after continuing to fire pot shots and calf kicks, Teporia came alive in the final minute of the second round, landing a blinding combination and countering Emmett effortlessly. Going in the pocket with him, bro. Oh! Ease! Dropped! And Emmett is a dog, bro. Now he's. Now nah, he tripped. Oh my gosh, bro. Yet still throwing a bomb to try to turn the tide. Oh my goodness, these are different to the fakes. You see how them leg kicks hurt too. Slide out. In the space, I respect Emmett at all times. Oh my goodness, right? An IFP. IFP, yeah. Look at the fakes. How he's moving his shoulder side to side. Like he's catching these punches, bro. And he's just standing there, like just still destroying this man. Oh, and the counter punches. Oh. Nah, he's destroying this man. Look at this man's face. Chopping his legs up. Oh, nah, bro. Look at his face. Put an exclamation mark on round four, with Emmett barely surviving into the fourth round. By this point, it was clear that Teporia was the far more advanced boxer. Body shots from Teporia. Emmett is still going. Teporia is just going to find his shot. Oh, uppercut was heavy. And Emmett's still going back to the canvas. <laughs> just get his ass whooped, bro. He's going to ground and pound instead of the submission. Chasing a finish late round four. The wildness of Emmett. Emmett survived. Getting older in the game, and he's going to keep trying. He can still knock you out. Have to give him the fifth round. Oh, my gosh. Everything hang out, and he's doing it. With this older guy. Jeez, bro. This dude's suing for the fences, bro. Now calling for that level change. Oh my goodness, bro. I would have grabbed him. I was about to say, man. I would have took him down, bro. He's throwing he's throwing too many hammers. Elbow. Throw the flag. If he wins, I wouldn't mind seeing him fight out. Look at Emmett's face, bro. Bruh. Oh nah, bro. This one was tough. A beautiful performance from Deporia. Proved that he can outsmart and outwork even the elite of the elite at 145 pounds. You fight at a level that is far beyond your age. Where did you develop this? So I showed once again that no one can match my level of skill inside the cage. Cage, and I proved once again tonight. Josh Emin ain't no, he ain't no joke, man. Emin ain't I no joke. Deserves to me, which is to be the number one to take that U.S. belt, and I want. Alex to defend that belt and show to him and the whole world 
whether his war is going to end and mine's going to start. So. Ilya Teporia's rise to the top of featherweight has been nothing short of exhilarating. Undoubtedly, a breath of fresh air in the division. Teporia's no-nonsense grappling style and incredibly snappy counterpunching has made him a must-watch. It's clear we're not just looking at a future champion, but a possible double champion. Sheesh. However, what lies before him is a puzzle that no one at 145 pounds <coughs> can solve. Alexander Volkanovsky can match any man at any discipline and has the accolades to prove it. Will this be too much for the 26-year-old Teporia? Or will he showcase the talent of a new generation of mixed martial artists? Only time will tell. Jeez. Loved it. Loved every minute, man. Shout out to uh, Marshall Liam, if I'm pronouncing it. Yeah, Marshall Liam. Uh, for the dope video, bro. This was Ilya Tepolia is relentless, bro. And these guys are going to collide. Him and Volk collide in a couple of weeks. Can't wait. Y'all let me know in the comment section, man. I'm your host, Gabos. Appreciate y'all, man. I'm going to holler at you guys in the next video. Ah.